Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the C++ for Java Developer series. In this episode, we will be talking about pointers in relation to arrays. So, I gave you a little challenge in the last episode to pass a vector to this initialization function and to initialize it within here. Well, the way we do this is pretty easy. We just change this parameter to a pointer, then we can change all of these dot operators to pointer operators and then instead of passing the vector, we can just pass the reference. And what we'll see is if we print this vector using our math library that we sort of coded in a couple episodes ago, then we should see that we get 10, 10, 10 printed out. And if we do this, then what you see is we get 10, 10, 10. Sweet, so that works perfectly. If you didn't get it, don't worry, that's fine. And if you initialized this as a pointer, that is fine as well. You could just pass them by reference or you could have created this vector as a pointer and then passed it directly into here. I want to make one other note real quickly before we do move on. So when you're allocating memory, say I created a vector three pointer. And so I create this vector A and this is a new vector three. I could create that and then I could get another pointer pointing to the same location, call that temp, okay? And let's say this is pointing to vector A. When you are freeing memory, what do you need to delete? Real quick, think about this. Well, we only need to delete vector A, okay? We could delete temp or we could delete vector A, but we should only delete one of them, why? Well, we only called new ones. We allocate memory here. This is where we are allocating the memory. Then we're just getting a pointer to that same block of memory, right? This We didn't allocate anything here. We're just pointing to the same place. So if we were to try and delete this twice, we're gonna get a breakpoint, right? So what's happened here is basically we tried to free invalid memory and so the CRT is probably throwing an exception. And if you go to your call stack down here, what you can see is it says the CRT is valid heat pointer through an exception. So basically what happened is we tried to free the same memory twice, which is not good, right? We only want to free that memory once. So if we just delete one of them, we get a successful execution. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about arrays and pointers real quick. And I'm gonna start off with some drawing. Remember how in the last episode I talked about the heap, which is where the operating system will hand us memory out of. And every time we call something like int star a equals a new int, what the heap does is it looks for something that is equal to the size of an int or bigger, and then it returns us a block of memory and we just get a pointer to this location in memory. Well, what if you wanted something bigger than one integer? right? We use arrays all the time. And so typically you won't really want to allocate memory for just one thing, but you'll usually want to do it for a collection of things. Well, how does that work? We could say, give me a hundred ints. And the way we would do this is we would use a bracket for an array operator, and then we would pass in a hundred and semicolon. What this is going to do is it's basically going to allocate enough memory for a hundred ints. So it'll be bigger and then it'll give us the pointer to the beginning of this huge block of memory, right? And this block of memory, how big will it be? Well, it will be 400 bytes because one integer is four bytes big, typically on a 32-bit machine. <laughs> so how do we access individual elements of this array, right? We have this giant array that has 100 different elements, but what if you just want to get the first element? Well, you could do that pretty easily by using the array operator right? We could say a zero equals 10. And what this will do is it will place 10 right here. We could also say a one equals five. And then what this will do is it will place five into the next location. What does the array operator do specifically though? Because this isn't magic, right? It's doing something very specific. There is one concrete implementation of how this array operator works. And it works this way, right? If we have this block of memory A and we call this operator zero or one, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say for this case, well, A pointer, right? We're gonna do that plus zero bytes. And then it's gonna dereference that. So it's gonna say dereference A plus zero equals 10, okay? And this is equivalent to, well, we're gonna do a plus one times the size of an integer. And we're gonna set that equal to five. 
Okay. It looks a little bit more cumbersome and that's the reason we have these array operators, but this is not magic. We can set these values just by dereferencing the same way we would do star a equals five. Speaking of that, what do you think star a equals five would do in this case? The correct answer is it'll just set the first element in the array to five. It won't do anything more because the operating system doesn't even know how big this block of memory is. It doesn't care, right? C++ doesn't care that this has 100 bytes. We care about that, but it doesn't. And this information is not stored anywhere. So when we're doing these access operators, if we did A101 equals 10, well, the operating system would happily go all the way out to here, try to place 10 right here. But then what's going to happen? Well, you may or you may not get an exception. If this memory is actually being used by your program, then you might accidentally just change something. <laughs> so you could accidentally change another variable that was located here without even knowing it. Or what's going to happen is if the operating system hasn't allocated this memory, then it'll throw an exception saying you're trying to access invalid memory. You can't do that. This is what we call an unsafe operation because we have, it's not defined. The behavior is not defined of what will happen when we do this. Now, the same thing goes for any other type of structure. Say you wanted an array of vectors. So you said vector three pointer. And if these are dynamically allocated, you need to use the pointer operator. And we'll just call this a equals a new vector three array. And we'll give it a hundred vector threes. This will do the same thing, except instead of allocating 400 bytes, it will look for another free memory allocation point to here. And it will allocate size of vector three times 100. Well, we have three floats in vector three, so that's 12 bytes. So we'll actually get 1200 bytes allocated and given to us to use. Now, the last thing of importance that you will want to know about is the delete operator for arrays. If you want to delete an array, then you must call it using brackets and then just pass in the variable that you want to delete. The reason for the brackets is because, uh, you know, I just said that the operating system doesn't know that you allocated 100 bytes, and that's sort of true. It really does know this, but that information is hidden away within the implementation of malloc. So we can't really get to that information. And malloc is just memory allocation. So allocate memory. We may talk about this in a future episode. But forget about that for now. Since I just introduced the way to use arrays using pointers, let's talk about how you would use an array if you didn't want to allocate it dynamically. Uh, we also have another memory location called the stack. And the stack is where normal variables live. So when you go int a, this basically just allocates memory on the stack. You don't have to worry about this. This memory will get cleaned up automatically by C++. And if you go vector three, b, and we do a bracket 10. What this is gonna do is this is gonna allocate enough memory on the stack for 10 vector threes, okay? And then we don't have to worry about cleaning this up and you can use this like a normal array. So you could use this just the same way that you would use this. Now, the one thing I want you to keep in mind is keep this mental image, okay? Everything is just a block of memory. Everything, 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 everything is a block of memory, <laughs> okay? Do not forget this when you're coding because it will make understanding why we can use pointers this way and why we can also use them this way and why we can also use them this way and the operating system will not complain. Even if we don't actually have an array, it will not complain about something like this. Let's go ahead and code and see what happens when we actually do some of this. So we are back here in the code. Let's go ahead and we'll create a vector three array. Okay, so we'll say vector three uh, vector array equals and then we'll go ahead and make a new array of vectors and we'll give it 10 vectors next let's go ahead and make sure that we delete because we want to just make sure that we don't forget to delete and uh unlike what i did you need to make sure to add in those bracket operators because we are deleting an array now we are not deleting just a regular pointer let's go ahead and put some stuff into this vector. so we'll loop through we'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than 10 i plus plus uh, vector array is not going to have a length property like Java or C sharp. We don't have that because we just have a block of memory. It's not going to tell us anything about it. It's just a block of memory. So we'll go ahead and since we know the length offhand, we'll just go and say vector array I equals, uh, and we'll just assign these each individually, right? So we'll say dot X equals I, and this is something else I should probably tell you about, right? 
Uh, when you're using the bracket operator, you can now all of a sudden use the dot operator again, which that is kind of weird because technically we are accessing a pointer. But if we think about this, what is really happening here is the operating system is doing star. Actually, we'll do star outside the parentheses. So we say star vector array plus i times size of vector three. And the size of operator is something that we haven't seen before. Uh, but this basically just returns the size of vector three. Very handy. And then it's going and adding an extra set of parentheses, then saying dot and we'll do dot y equals i. I'm doing this just to show you that this will do the exact same thing. And we're getting a warning here, but we should be fine with that warning. So let's go ahead and just say vector array i dot z equals i. Okay. And I'm actually going to set this one to i plus one just so that we can see that this really does work. And this is exactly the same thing that the bracket operators are doing, which is why we can use dot instead of using a pointer. Okay. And then we'll go ahead after we initialize everything, I'm going to do a separate for loop where we loop through all the values once again, and we're going to say print, or actually I think it's math, math print, and we'll do vector array i just to see if we did indeed fill these up correctly. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And we get an exception. Why do we get an exception? Well, I forgot a very important thing about C++. Uh, if we are adding anything to a pointer, it automatically adds that times the size of that object. So if we simply do vector array plus I, it will do what we actually want it to do. There we go. And you can see we get zero, one, zero, since we're adding one to the Y values, then we get one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, all the way through. If you actually wanted to do like I times the size of vector three, you have to do a couple other things, which just make it really ugly. So this is definitely the easiest way to do it, but this is what the array operator is doing under the hood. It's nothing more than just a simple addition and then a dereference. Then we can use that dot operator. Now let's combine some of this knowledge and do something a little bit more complicated. Let's say we fill this vector with the values zero through 10. And instead of doing a vector three, we will simply use an integer vector uh, to simplify things a little bit more. So let's say we just say, uh, change this to array now array i equals i. Well, actually we'll do uh, 10 minus i, which should give us 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so on until we hit one. And let's just change this to array. Now let's go ahead and just print these values, make sure that everything looks right. So if we go i equals zero until i is less than 10, i plus plus. And then we'll say printf uh, percent d, actually we'll do i is percent d, and then value is percent D. Then we'll do slash N and we'll print I and then we will print array I. So that should give us uh, I and then what is stored there. So if we go ahead and run this real quickly, uh, we see that we get 10, 9, 8 all the way down as we go zero through nine. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and move this into a function. So we'll create a function called void print array takes in an int star array and we're gonna pass in an int size. Okay, the size is important. This is something you need to do if you're working with raw pointers in C++ since we can't get the size inherently from the pointer. Then we can simply say for int i equals zero until i is less than size, i plus plus, and then we'll just say printf. Uh, let's actually just copy this right now and paste it here. That should do the same thing. So if we now go ahead and type in print array, and pass it the array, we should get the same thing we saw just a second ago. Oh, and I'm forgetting to pass in the size, which is 10. So we can't forget that. So you see, we get the same thing once again. And this is just illustrate another important concept. Passing arrays is as simple as passing a pointer, right? We don't really have to worry about too much. And the same thing is true of as of static arrays, right? So if we change this from not a pointer, if we just say int array and then bracket 10, uh, we're creating a static array and we're going to have to pass in the address of this array now, or actually <laughs> yet again, another oddity of C++. So arrays are treated implicitly as pointers, even if we didn't really uh, allocate this dynamically on the heap. Uh, let's also get rid of this delete operator because we will get an exception if we leave that in there. So then if we go ahead and run this, it works the same way again. So 
no matter what you do, if you want to print or work with an array, you need to take that array by pointer. It's the only way to really work with it. We'll leave this as a static array now. So we'll just remove this delete operator and we'll go ahead and make one more function called sort. So we'll say sort array 10, which is the size. And then we'll go ahead and make a void function called sort takes in an int star, which is an array and a size. And we'll do the simplest sort I know of. I don't even know the name of this sort. I think it's bubble sort, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, we'll just loop through. So we'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than uh, size i plus plus. And then inside of here, we can just say for int j equals zero until j is less than size j plus plus. And we can say if int i, or I'm sorry, if array i is greater than array j, then we just want to swap these values. So we'll say int temp equals array i, then we'll say array i equals array j, and then we'll say array j equals temp. And I believe this should sort it. I can't even really think about if this is going to do the right thing. So let's just go ahead, we'll sort it, and then we'll say print array and see if it prints it in the sorted order now. So if we go ahead and run this, you see that we get the exact same thing. And I think that's because I am sorting it. I'm just sorting it the wrong way. So let's change this to a less than operator instead of greater than run this one more time. There we go. And so you see, we get 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So this is all just pretty basic programming stuff. What we're doing is we're simply showing how you can work with pointers as if they're arrays and you better hope they are arrays because if they're not, you will get errors. Final thing that I think I'm going to do for today is we'll go ahead and see what happens if you dereference an array at the wrong point. So if we say array 11 equals five, what happens when we do this? Well, most likely what will happen? Well, <laughs> actually this goes exactly to show you what can happen. Uh, it ran, it didn't throw an error. We have no idea that this was actually wrong because it doesn't tell us, okay? This is why C++ is considered dangerous, right? You can do something like this and it will happily execute that. What is actually happening here? Um, let's go ahead and write int a equals 10. And if this all works properly, this should probably change this variable to five. I have no idea if this is actually gonna work, but let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Yeah, so it looks like we're not as lucky as I was hoping, but we can still see what happens. So if I go ahead and copy this address, paste it into our watch window, then what you'll see is we get zero A, which is 10 uh, in the first block of memory, which takes up the first four bytes. And then we get zero, uh, as you can see the first four bytes, then we get zero nine, takes up the next four bytes. Then we get eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then we get C, 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 then we get five. That's a problem, right? What we've done is we've just, we've kind of hit invalid memory, right? If we went a little bit farther, let's actually see what this is. So if we go one, two, three, four, this looks like it might be the value of A. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if this works. We'll go ahead and instead of doing 11, we'll do 17. Maybe that will do what we want it to do. Okay, and it looks like 15 was the magic number here. Okay, so look at this. This is super interesting. What we've done here is illegal. It's undefined. We don't know what's going to happen when we access this element that's outside of the array, but we kind of do know what's going to happen because we counted and we sort of figured out where the value A was inside of memory. Uh, look at this. We've changed the value of A to five because of this line. If we change this to like 15, uh, look, A is 10 up here. We're not touching A, but we kind of are uh, because this changes to 15. This is just to illustrate. You can have a C++ program that runs perfectly fine, shows no problems, except you'll get a really weird bug every now and then. And that's because you're doing something like this. You're touching some memory, which happens to belong to another piece of valid code, except you shouldn't really be touching that memory and you're changing values and you don't know what you're changing. So this is just the danger of C++. You have to be careful, all right? If you access memory that's out of bounds, then you are in no man's land. And what I typically do to avoid something as simple as this is if I'm ever working with some sort of array, first of all, I don't use raw pointers when I'm working with arrays. I use some sort of structure that has the size built in. And then I do something like I say assert that uh, I is less than size, right? Whenever I access one of the elements. And, we will talk about how you can make sure that this stuff never happens by using standard library stuff to avoid 
all of this chaos. Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. For your challenge today, this is pretty challenging. Uh, I want you to create something called a linked list. Now, if you don't know what a linked list is, I suggest you look that up. Uh, you can Google singly linked list because this is the specific kind I want. But the basic premise of how it works is you basically have just a bunch of nodes. And so you have uh, a link in that list, which has a value, and then it has a pointer to the next node. And that pointer points to another node, which has some other arbitrary value, and then also has a next pointer. And you can use that and so on and so forth until the terminating one has a null pointer, which means that it has nothing. So you can see that I've used null pointer here, which we haven't talked about, but it's base, it is the exact same thing as null in Java. It just means that it doesn't exist. And so I have basically created this list by calling this function, then I've added a uh, few elements to it. And then I say linked list iter for iterator equals the list. So I assign it to the first node. Then I say while iter is not a null pointer, we print what the value is. So we print this value, then we say iter equals iter next. So then we say it equals this. Uh, we loop through, this is not null. We print the value, well, that's the value. Then we say it equals the next. Well, next is null, so we go through. We hit this, this is no longer true, so we break out. And then we delete the list, which should free every single node in here. And then uh, we return zero. And if we run this, you can see that we get 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 printed out, which as you can see, I use 10 as the initial value, then 8, 6, 4, 2, which is exactly what I added. And you could add on to this arbitrarily long forever and ever, and it will continue to grow until you no longer have any memory left. So go ahead and implement this. Uh, this one is a little bit tricky and I will go over the solution in the next tutorial. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode when we talk about references.